Welcome, uh, everyone. Thank you for joining uh, my session at the Data Platform Discovery Day. I hope that you are enjoying and learning a lot from the expert, from the community members, which um, are quite also happy to, to be here. In my case, uh, as well, uh, I would like to share some uh, knowledge that I get when developing uh, mobile applications, and in this case, combining or integrating some Microsoft technologies. So the topic today is serverless mobile database access with Azure Functions, Xamarin, and SQL Azure. Uh, my name is Luis Beltran. I am a Microsoft MVP in developer technologies and artificial intelligence. I am from Mexico, but uh, currently I am um, researching at Thomas Bata University in Slim. I'm also complete or pursuing my PhD in artificial intelligence. I work as well as lecturer at uh, Tecnológico Nacional de México in, in, in Celaya, Mexico. And yeah, I enjoy everything related with the uh, Xamarin, Azure, artificial intelligence, if I can integrate or develop applications which uh, connect this. Yeah, it's uh, perfect, or at least for learning a bit. So, well, uh, here you have my, my email and also my Twitter account as it was said before, yeah, it's where everything happens. So it's highly recommended. I spend some minutes uh, there learning new stuff, uh, connecting and yeah, finding interesting uh, news and topics. So yeah, feel free to reach out. I will do my best to, to help you. So let's get started with our topic. Uh, we will have a very brief uh, Azure Functions uh, session. And then we will go to, to Azure to, to do some coding. So, yeah, we, we know or we have heard probably about the serverless world. Maybe we have an idea that uh, serverless is absence of server, that no, no more servers, but actually means uh, less server there will always be servers there will always the companies will always have server but the key point is to focus on the code rather on the infrastructure so there is so much talk about the cloud sometimes we might forget where it all began that in the data center but Nowadays, yeah, we don't have to configure these quite huge physical servers and go install into data center because taking all these responsibilities that you can see in this uh, small slide, uh, yeah, means a lot of questions to, to answer. So how do I secure physical access? How many servers do I need? What happens if the power uh, goes out? So they, these are distractors from our, let's say, productivity, from our building um, software um, tasks in order to, yeah, to, to be successful at, at the, of the company. So virtualization was one of the solutions that came to the rescue and especially with the boost of uh, cloud cloud um, cloud platforms cloud services infrastructure infrastructure as a service which actually uh, in this case you will stop worrying about the hardware so you can focus on only operating system and managing your virtual machines and also you uh, save some some money in, in the process uh, of course, you can also uh, improve the resources usage, and it is faster to provision, provision uh, new instances. Still, there are some questions that you need to solve in the IIS world, uh, but at least there are uh, less than in the on-premises case. Then 
there was another uh, evolution of application platform, which is a platform as a service. So now the runtime is uh, hosted. We no longer need to worry about hardware, about operative, operative system, or even the dependencies. Just focus on our project. Mm, no need to update an operative system. No need to think about dependencies, about uh, libraries. Because platform as a service simplifies this process, uh, provides a platform uh, where you can code, where you can run at scale, because yeah, you can still increase or decrease the size of your um, elements, yes, and also specify uh, which instances will manage your workloads. Still, there are some questions to, to be addressed. To, to address, sorry. So the ultimate um, evolution in this case is the serverless world in which we stop worrying about everything that is not named code. Mm, yeah, still there will be a server, yes. It doesn't mean that the server mag uh, mag magically, magically disappears and the code is hosted in an error, let's say, no, nope. uh, we still to, uh, need to run on infrastructure, but e uh, this infrastructure is abstract. So we don't need to worry. There is less server in the responsibility from, from us. So we just code. We just worry about how do we architect our application? What code do we need? Um, so we focus on the important, let's say, uh, element in our in our software building solutions. Um, so so yeah, serverless can be considered cloud native uh, applications. But uh, yeah, what do they need? Yeah, so this is just like the uh, you know in Azure you can find this. Um, Offerings, you can still find infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, serverless, yes, because sometimes you will need to work on this, um, let's say, uh, element. You, you will still need to provision some virtual machines for a specific scenarios. So they are still part of, of the cloud. Uh, serverless is not replacing, let's say, other uh, offerings, but it's just another solution. Uh, which can be useful for scenarios where you don't have to worry about everything else uh, except code, of course. With serverless, the server, including hardware infrastructure and configuration of operating system, as I said, are abstracted away. So we don't know, even worry about uh, web services because those are part of, of the platform. So serverless computation can be considered uh, fully managed services. And yeah, also the term function as a service is, uh, is um, let's say, around in the conversation. So they can be uh, considered. Um, actually, there are no administrative tasks. No need to manage any, any infrastructure. Just deploy your code and it runs and you will be provided with a key or a URL that you will integrate in your application um, in a matter of seconds and you will see in, in this uh, project. It can be scaled uh, quickly in seconds. Mm, yeah, there are a lot of um, benefits, a lot of uh, advantage that we will check in the, in the next uh, slide. And also, but, but just, just one more thing about this, is that serverless is actually uh, super cheap um, because the pricing model is uh, based on micro billing. The resources in serverless are built only when you use them. So you don't pay to uh, host or to reserve an instance or work, uh, workloads only when this your, your code is executed maybe it is called by an http request 
or maybe you set up a timer and it will run. Yes. So yeah, the, the pricing model is quite uh, cheap compared with the others, uh, with the other offerings, okay? So also some other benefits is that the DevOps operation is uh, simplified. You can focus on the business logic, as I will mention, and it is quite uh, quick to go into uh, the market, even maybe into production, because you are just uh, worrying about your, your code. So there is low effort to get started. Of course, uh, Azure offers uh, multiple services in serverless ecosystem. So one of them, sorry, is the Azure Functions, uh, which are code-based service. It's like a tiny piece of code, a function that gets executed uh, at some point. And yeah, there are also uh, logic applications where you have also connectors. They are also, um, let's say, part of the serverless uh, computation and uh, or, or platform. And yeah, you have these connectors and, and functions. Mm. And the good things about this is that you can integrate these elements with several uh, other products from Azure. You can use uh, connectors, you can infuse intelligence with uh, cognitive services maybe, or build a bot solution that interacts with a function or that may sends a request to, to nature functions. You can plug many, um, many components from Azure platform or even third party. Yes, that is also possible. Uh, you can work in the portal for something very quick or from the from, from the Visual Studio Code or, or from Visual Studio 2019, because there is IDE support uh, for, for development. You can um, analyze, you can get some insights uh, um, from the execution history. Um, and, and also you can have these functions running in local environments. So you can have your test in your uh, local, let's say, uh, a scenario. And when you are uh, confident, when it is working, you can uh, publish it to the cloud. So yeah, that is that is also possible. And of course, other components that you can integrate are databases, storage, uh, IoT, um, analytics. Yeah, you 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 name it. So functions are literally code and events. Uh, code that you write and is executed um, when a condition or when an event is uh, launched. So, uh, why should you care? Why should you use uh, HR functions? Well, you can write your code in several languages, not only Microsoft or C Sharp technology. You can write them in Node.js, which is quite popular actually. And you can use Python, F Sharp, PHP, PowerShell, also another uh, popular uh, um, language for, for Azure Functions. Um, yeah, there are several languages that you can use. Um, you can also, you can integrate uh, third party or Microsoft components from Nuget, Nuget Packet Manager, uh, and also from Node.js uh, Packet Manager, NPM. Mm, and so to, to increase the functionality of, of, your, of your code. And it is even possible to run ex, uh, executable files, and also you can load your DLLs, dynamic libraries, into your functions. So yeah, the, the, those are like hidden gems that you can um, use in your Azure functions to, to improve your, your uh, or to offer more functionality. Okay. 
Mm, yeah, we uh, it, it is even possible to to have uh, triggers and bindings. Triggers uh, are quite related with events. Okay, so for instance, when the when our users from the application uploads upload a blob storage, upload a file into our storage uh, account. An Azure trigger, a blob trigger, can be launched. So a code that we have in, in our version function can be executed when when this happens. This happens, or maybe a new record was uh, inserted in our Cosmos DB, or updated, or even deleted. Uh, yes, we can also we we have a Cosmos DB trigger that we can launch to prepare a backup, to copy data into other place, to do some calculations, to obtain the latest data, whatever you want. The most popular are HTTP triggers, uh, which uh, mainly we can use them as uh, replacements or quick replacements of web services. Uh, also timer triggers, code that is executed uh, in, uh, in periodic uh, times, timing like every day or exactly at 9 a.m. every week on Monday, yes. Also webhooks to connect with other platforms such as GitHub when someone pushes a new change. Yes, that is also possible. And the bindings refer to which elements you can uh, connect and you can even use in your code. So you can have a OneDrive binding when uh, a new version of a file is, let's say, um, let's say uh, added. Yeah, we can obtain the name of this file, or we can copy, move it to a blog storage. Uh, there are email bindings. We will actually work on them for the demo uh, that you can use to 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 send an email to to your customers. Um, Table bindings to insert data. Um, yeah, unfortunately, no uh, SQL Server, but yeah, we will manage to, to do it. Uh, so yeah, you you can integrate also files from different um, platforms. And yeah, well, you can use the bindings in your code. As I mentioned, they will be part of your parameters. Yes, the, an, uh, an output block, you can get the file name, the size, even the content. And in this case, you, we can create uh, a copy that uh, resizes the source image to a specific um, size. Yes, so that, that, that is possible and very simple. Yes. And usually this, not, not usually, this binding, exist in a JSON file. So you can we can quickly uh, modify this to connect to other uh, storage account or to change the name of the maybe the container or the parameter. Yeah, the parameter, yes. Or we can use another connection that we have. So it is quite easy to, to integrate. We can use the portal which is easier or we can also use visual studio and we need to write uh, or add these bindings manually but there are quite good samples in the documentations and yeah you can see in these functions the parameters are there used in the code and yeah there are several scenarios that i just mentioned so very quickly so we can go to the demo so maybe um, every 15 minutes you are running a timer trigger that uh, checks uh, or validates information that you find in a uh, table storage and uh, this uh, validation checks if the data is correct or not if some field is missing it can be maybe adjusted to some default value or maybe the 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 world record is deleted because there are policies, yes. And every 15 minutes, you will have the latest update, cleanest data. So yeah, that is possible. Um, I, I mentioned that 
um, we can also have a blob uh, trigger that when users add uh, new files, upload new files into our container, we can process, we can open this uh, blob and maybe they are CSV files to, and we can convert them into data rows which will be used as a source for uh, Power BI uh, graphs, charts. So yeah, we can do that. We can connect uh, our code, sorry, uh, there in, in functions. So this can be the perfect uh, middle layer between several um, components. And yeah, we, we mentioned that in mobile applications, we uh, upload images and they can be resized uh, or scaled for especially for in the mobile world uh, yeah the data is um, is the king uh, because if you have larger images yeah you, your users will not be happy but if they, you don't lose resolution and they are smaller in size that would be perfect okay and yeah you, you can imagine several scenarios all right, good. So let's go to, to our demo. In our case, as we mentioned, okay, we explore what is Azure Functions. We know that they are useful. And the objective is to create a kind of uh, web service in that uh, interacts with the SQL Server, sorry, Azure SQL database. And, and then we uh, see this information in a mobile application with summary. All right, so let us uh, let me show you something first. Mm. Okay, let's okay. okay. Let's go to the Azure portal and. So currently we have a database. We already have it. I will show you in a second. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, Jeff. Maybe let me do it. So we only have one table in this in this uh, database. Only two throughout but yeah we can add more later but okay we have employee name we have employee email so we we'll of course have the we can obtain the connection string of course we it will be needed uh, at some point because yeah we would like to connect uh, to 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 the from the azure function so we uh, obtain this uh, string and um, but yeah, later I, we need to change the password. Yeah, so I will do that uh, offline. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's all we have uh, for the moment. So let's create an Azure function. Uh, we choose the subscription. Uh, I already have a um, resource group, but you can create one. Uh, we will use uh, function app name. Let's, let's use dpdb demo. Okay, yes, it's valid. Sorry if someone will use it later. Uh, runtime stack is uh, .NET Core because I am c developer, but you can use others that you saw. Inversion, um, I will use, okay, okay, we will change later. 
version 2 because I had a few issues with version 3. And region central US, okay, that's fine for me. So very basic information at the beginning. Uh, okay, it's the information is validated. Yeah, let's trade it. So we will wait a bit until our resource is um, is uh, deployed. And here, here it is. And just give me a second because I'm a little a bit lost with my. So, okay, yeah, it's still underway. Um, okay, so we will perform a CRUD operations. We will create a function for reading data from the database, inserting new elements, updating, deleting, and finally, we will send emails uh, from uh, a function. We will actually use a service, which is SendGrid. You might uh, know it. Um, so that's uh, basically what we are going to build in the next 25 minutes, hopefully. Well, I, I have my chip, chip here, so maybe we can go a bit faster. But of course, I will explain what is happening in there. So we will go to our resource. And yeah, one of the first things that I will do is to uh, go here to the function app settings. And I will change the runtime version to number two, because as I said, I had a few issues with version three. So yeah, I will. And change to version two. Okay, another thing is that, uh, okay, yeah, maybe why not while I am still here. Uh, this will be uh, useful later for, for the send grid part because of the library. I will use the preview or beta version, which is a version for, from the extension bundle 2.1.0 slash, uh, sorry, type in beta one. Yes, so I will save. Here in this host JSON file, you can add uh, several, let's say, packages. Yes. So yeah, it is already saved. And the third, change but not the latest one but for the moment yes i will add an application setting which uh, if you give me one second because i am right now uh, writing my password yes we will create actually uh, an application settings to for the connection string to our database so so our function can connect to it rather than having this connection string in our host. So the name can be maybe, um, I don't know, um, SQL DB connection, yes, and the value. Okay, yes, so yeah, you already saw my password. <laughs> I didn't want that password, good. And that's it for the moment. So let's just save it, okay. And we are good to go. Let's go back to functions. We are going to create our very first one. Okay. Uh, first, we need to choose our development environment. So I will choose in portal, continue. Um, now, let's uh, use this uh, 
okay, let's let's find the HTTP trigger here. Yes. The name of this one is get employees function. Okay. And it's an HTTP trigger. So in our code, we will uh, create a REST uh, calls and this code will be executed. So yeah, in, in this section, you see we have uh, libraries. This is an external element, an external package, newtonstuff.json, which is quite uh, popular. I think it actually it's the most downloaded package in NuGet. Uh, yeah, because it is uh, very useful for handling the serialization and the serialization. Yes. So here you can see these three elements, okay? Uh, external packages, the using the libraries, the namespaces that we need, and our main code. So we are actually going to replace um, this code, yeah, to, to maybe do things a bit faster. Uh, I am going to use, if you are from the SQL database, uh, Work, yeah, you might know this library, system.data.sql client, SQL client, um, which is available in .NET Core now. I will also add a few namespaces, yes, that we are going to use, collection generic, because we are going to deal with, uh, with lists. Uh, of course, the new library that we just included in our package. And um, yeah, the, the rest is, um, let's say normal for HTTP and async await tasks. So the rest is just a model. This is a, a class, which is employee class. Uh, of course, you know that in our database we have ID, employee name, and employee name. This is just model. And finally, the code, which of course is the important part here. So let me. Um, just put it here, but of course, as I said, I am going to explain what is happening or how I do this. Of course, in this um, HTTP request, you will uh, return, uh, let's say, OK, object result, if the operation was completed successfully, or maybe a bad request. Everything, every, every communication in this case is with the uh, HTTP verbs that you know from, from communications. So that's what I'm doing, doing here, yes. So in this case, um, I am obtaining my connection from the application settings of, of the function. I am creating just a placeholder list that I will return at the end. And here I am using the uh, SQL connection object. Opening the connection, this is the Command uh, text, the query text, yes. And yeah, I am using the SQL command, SQL data reader. So this code might be quite familiar for, for you, especially if you have developed C sharp applications at the beginning before, let's say, entity framework, or if you use this library. So as you can see, this functionality, and we can use them, use it here in, in our code, but it is now hosted in the cloud. And yeah, the, the rest is quite simple. We just populate the list uh, for with uh, each um, record that we get from from our uh, connection from our sorry from our query. So as you can see, very simple code, very easy. Yeah, we are obtaining every field, every property, and finally we are returning um, an OK, um, let's say response result, sorry, uh, 200, with parameter this list. We can save uh, this code. We can even run it. There is a test uh, here. We, we can just check the console to see if there are no mistakes or in the log. Yeah, yeah. The, actually, it was compilated successfully. We can actually test if there is a window here. We can send parameters. Uh, but yeah, let's just run it and you will see the result here. Yeah, you see here the output. Sorry. Is my 
uh, information from our data, my database. In this case, it's an array of objects, JSON format, of course, and everything is yes. So, so far, so good for our first function, yes. And how we are going to integrate this one into our uh, application? Well, it's very easy because every function provides a function URL, yes, that we can copy. And yeah, actually, if you don't mind, I can even uh, add it in my code. Yes, why not? Uh, so let me you can see here. I, I have uh, constants part. So um, yeah, let me very quickly remove this. Okay, so I will first uh, put the URL here in the function-based URL. All our functions are hosted, of course, in the same, let's say, um, uh, domain. So um, rather than have the full URL, I am going to simply extract this uh, from the function name to the parameter. Yes. All, all functions will have this base address. Only the function part, the last part, is changing. OK, so that's it for the uh, get. Uh, let's now create another function very quickly, because time is running. But you saw that it worked. Uh, let's go to the maybe insert employee function. Let's add a new one. It's again HTTP trigger insert uh, employee function. Let's create it. And uh, if you don't mind, allow me to uh, use my code from here. And what is different from what we uh, did in the previous one only a couple of things because we we still have our uh, external libraries or components uh, name spaces the employee class our uh, reference to our database connection string in this case yep we are actually sending the, the uh, um, we're sending um a value over the uh, request. So actually, in this case, this will be a post uh, request, yes, uh, rather than get, because yeah, we would like to uh, update um, information on the server. So we are sending uh, in uh, in JSON, uh, uh, sorry, uh, in, as, as, as a string content, we are sending this uh, information. In this case, it's an employee. So we are obtaining it from our body request and uh, yeah, converting it into an employee object with our JSON, uh, JSON convert uh, case. And after that, we can use the execute non query async uh, command from SQL command. Yes, uh, methods from the command, sorry. And of course, we need. Uh, a, a string, which is the insert uh, command that we all know. And here we are just replacing the, the values that we obtained from our op. And yeah, that's it. So we can save it, but uh, we cannot immediately test it or run it there. We, uh, we would need to prepare uh, a body, a request body, but we can do it directly here in the portal. So we can use employee uh, name, let's say John, and the email. Okay, so I will use one that I have <laughs> just to make sure that it works. And that's it. Um, yeah, we don't need the ID actually because it's uh, 
its uh, identity. So let's run it. And it was compiled successfully. Yes. In this case, yeah, I'm not uh, returning everything. Well, actually, yes, I'm just sending a message here. One row was updated, so it was actually inserted. So we are good to go. And the other functions, the update and the delete, are pretty much the same. You only change this part, and the rest is, is, is the same. So very quickly, I will just um, create them. Uh, so we can, uh, sorry, actually, before that, I will obtain my URL. Put it on the mobile and we will check this part. Okay. So let's obtain it because, yeah, we are almost at the end of this presentation. Um, let's insert and just remove this part. Next up, we have the update. Update employee function, right? Okay. It is there. Now let's type it. You see the update function there. Uh, you can believe me that it works, or at least that it compiles successfully. We will show it in the demo. And finally, the delete part. In this case, uh, we will do it uh, by the ID. Okay, I, I forgot to get the the URL, but I will do it later. Delete employee function. Type. And thanks. Say, um, you see the delete part here. We only care about the ID. Let's obtain this. Um, delete. Mm -hmm. um, I just need the update. Yeah. Copy. Save. And so <clears throat> while we are here, yeah, we can take a look at the mobile application. So okay, I, I just it will take uh, a few seconds to, to run. So here maybe the, the most important part is this class employee service i am using the http client which is quite uh, popular in c sharp world or dotnet uh, world uh, i am sending this very url that you know from from the dpdd demo actual websites uh, and then i have a method uh, get employees which uses this uh, get all url uh, constant insert i have every, uh, each method one method per uh, let's say function that i created in, in the portal so this is some kind of uh, rest based uh, scenario yes and uh, this is called in my view model of course uh, i have this uh, list employee where i for instance um, call this uh, get employees method so I think now it is running. Mm, let's okay. Yeah, I need. Mm, I need to go with. I mean, okay. Yeah, it is. Good. Yes. So hopefully you are seeing it. If not, please let me know. But um, I'm sure that you you are seeing it. So here, yeah, you can see that my three. Uh, database items are there or table items are there uh, so let's take a look at john let's go to details uh, let's update this value john title maybe let's save it 
Yeah, I didn't, let's say, send any message, but if we will go back, this value is updated because, yeah, this view is uh, refreshing. Uh, let's maybe uh, test the remove part, delete. Yeah, it is already done. Click and re uh, record number two is no longer in our database. And yeah, just finally the new, new um, Louis two, and yeah. Okay, good. So save it, and it is yes. So it's working. Good. So for these scenarios, yeah, they can be useful, and it's also again a super cheap, and maybe a more interesting scenario is that we are also maybe familiar with is uh, sending emails in applications maybe mobile applications um so for this case i am going to use uh, sendgrid actually one of the advantages is that there is a sendgrid function integrated here in this uh, in this offering in this product so we can just search and we obtain the sendgrid function we can send a confirmation email in this case yeah it says when a new item is added into a queue but we can actually modify this behavior so let's add it um yeah let, let's um send email let's let's uh, change the name we actually need uh uh, sorry, we need an uh, API key, which we will, sorry, we, we, we need an application setting from our service. Do you remember that I set up the <coughs> database connection? In my case, I don't have it, but, uh, okay, I don't have it in here, but I do have, sorry, uh, I do have um, uh, a key. So if you give me a second, yeah, I will add it. So let's go back a bit to our application settings. Just it is here. Yes, in a second, okay. Yeah, and have it here. So in our application settings, I will add it the very same way I did with the database one connection. So send grid for API key. What? Actually, you can create a send grid resource here in, in Azure. So that's it. It is there, save, okay, yeah, yeah, let's save these changes. And now if we go to our function, we, if we create, uh, again, a send grid function, okay, yeah, send grid, uh -huh. We need the function name, which is send emails. Uh, we select the API key, which is here. We are selecting the setting, not the value. Okay, so that's uh, good to, to, to know. Uh, from address, okay, yeah, I can use the one that I register, but actually I am sending this from my code. And the two uh, will be obtained, of course, from the code. So let's create it. And we will get uh, code to send an email from a queue when a new item is inserted in the queue. But we are going to change that behavior, as I said. 
so yeah let's uh, paste it oh, so yeah, here let's replace it uh what we are doing okay again uh, our data sql client our send grid in this case that's a new element or library namespaces i am using an email message uh, class or object which includes the sender um, information and also the message the subject text who is sending an email and name and uh, we need to set up a parameter in our function that you will see in a second we are obtaining this object to uh, set up the, the message like okay who is sending it uh, what is the subject yes and in order to uh, to see the, to get the address uh, list yes i am simply obtaining the employee emails from my employee table and for each email i am adding it into a list this list is a list of email address this one comes from sendgrid of course uh, from the sendgrid class because at the end our sendgrid message uh, with the method add to choose we just uh, use this this list and this message and when this uh, function finishes this message will be sent all right so we save it mm, also mm, i need to change the the bindings because this function at the beginning if uh, you remember i mentioned that it uh, works with a uh, queue. So in this function.json file, let's change this binding type in for this one to make it an HTTP call. Yes. So and get and post are valid. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's it. So let's save it. Let's obtain the, the the URL I need to go back to my file. Mm. Okay. Mm. I, okay, let's let's run it. Mm. Oh, actually it says that oh yes, I think no, I, I think I missed uh, something, just give me a second. <laughs> mm, interest. Hi, Lewis. Do you yes. have much longer to go? No, actually, oh. I'm just uh, showing this uh, demo and that's it. So uh, maybe okay. just one more minute. Uh, let, let me just that's try fine, yeah, to, yeah. Yes, to, to change this okay. message and that should make it. So, yeah, this is my last uh, example. So let's see if it solves this issue. Otherwise, I will just uh, use the, the other one that I have as a backup and, and you can see that the email is sent so and that's uh, okay yeah i know why there is an error because yeah this should be a post request so the copy um i just need to check if this compiles correctly yeah okay good so let's place this code into our application and that should be the last part. Um, yeah. but we stop it, we compile it again. And maybe I in the while it is compiling I will show you my uh emails okay, no, not the standard mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay uh -huh. and a message so it should appear here why after I can send it so let's just wait a minute that should be almost the, the end okay so hopefully it will compile very quickly
So let's uh, simply click on this send email. Uh, okay, no notification, but a message should appear here. Hopefully, let's or let me refresh. Okay, yeah. Well, I, I didn't get it, so yeah, maybe there is some some error. I, I will check. I will share the, the code, of course, and I will try to see what, what happened because well, it, it worked. I, I, I have it uh, somewhere here, the, the, the other one. But just to finish my presentation, mm -hmm. uh, let me uh, thank you. And you also, well, here you have my information. If you if I can help you somehow, if there are any questions, yeah, I would be glad to answer them. And thank you for your attention. Thank you, Lewis. That was oh, a fabulous very session. Very thank you very much, Lewis. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. I, haven't, I haven't got any questions <laughs> asked on the um, on the GoToWebinar, but yeah, it was a fantastic session with the uh, Hey Quickly created an Azure function. And you okay. can, I didn't realize you could do so much in the, uh, in the, uh, in the front end as well as Visual Studio. Yes, yes, yes. I, I will share the, the code, this application, everything. You can uh, check the GitHub and also the presentation. You can find the slides on SlideShare. So you can maybe take a screenshot of it and yeah, that would be. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me and enjoy the rest of the sessions. Thank you very much, Lewis. Thank you. Okay, goodbye.